Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a video. Today we're talking about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. This is a condition of the joints. It's to do with collagen and what happens is you dislocate with this condition. You sublux, which is partial dislocation. And every morning I actually have to put both of my shoulders back into place because they are both dislocated fully or subluxed. My wrist will click out of place. My finger joints will come out of place. My hip clicks out as I walk. My knees move to the side. The kneecaps move in and out of place as I'm walking. And that's even if I'm using crutches or walking sticks, sometimes even I'll use my mum's rollator walker if I really need some assistance. It's one of those conditions that is really difficult to live with because whatever you do, even if you're sitting down, it hurts. When your joints sublux or dislocate, what happens is all around that particular joint, all of your muscles go into spasm when that happens. And sometimes your joint or your ligaments and your muscles overstretch because of the dislocation. So obviously they react by contracting and spasming. They seize up. People aren't diagnosed for quite a long time. I've actually had this condition since I was a baby, but it wasn't diagnosed until I was about, I think, 23 or 24. So it took all those years of me suffering and going backwards and forwards to the doctors and the hospitals to find out what was wrong. Obviously, because I'm so overly flexible and people with this condition are, my spine is completely and utterly wrecked. Because I used to be a dancer without knowing that I had this condition, I actually made it 10 times worse. And I had to give up work as soon as they diagnosed me. They said, you have to stop because you're, you're causing yourself damage. And I got arthritis, osteoarthritis. I want to speak to you more about my spine because Ellis danlos syndrome and hypermobility can really severely affect your back. And so many things wrong with my spine all stemmed from this Ellis danlos syndrome. So basically all of the joints and the ligaments, they bend and stretch as we move around all day long. And obviously as I was dancing and my back was so overly flexible, I caused so much wear and tear because of the Ehlers Danlos that I've, I caused osteoarthritis. I've got spondylosis, spondylitis. And I have got spinal cord damage, which is very serious. I've already had one spinal operation in my neck. You can't really see the scar anymore. It's very, very faded if you look there. I've had a metal disc replacing the disc on my C5, C6. I have a metal plate, I have screws and I have a rod. And I need to have another, at least another three of these done. So the spinal cord damage is called myelomalacia. It is a myelopathy, which is a spinal cord damage disease. And I have something called the dying back phenomenon, which is where the myelomalacia disease is spreading upwards because where my metal plate is stopping it, it's not going downwards. So it's going up into the rest of my neck. And I'm also getting some of it actually below where my metal disc is as well. So it's actually quite serious. I've been to see surgeons recently and a neurologist as it's affecting my hands, my arms, my legs and the prognosis actually is is that I'm going to go paralysed whether I have surgery or not. So even if I put my body through yet another spinal surgery I will be going paralysed. So it's a very big thing that I've had to come to terms with and I'm still struggling. It's been causing me anxiety about my future, obviously depression. There's so much I wanted to achieve in my life but it just hasn't worked out like that and I've been quite fortunate in my life that I reached many of my goals and I, I managed to achieve some of my dreams and I know that not many people can say that so for that I am grateful but it hurts when you know that there's some things that your heart truly truly wants and you just know that you won't be able to get it so I'm trying to think of some new goals and I think that's really important for everyone not just people with illnesses but anyone if you reach your goal make another make another dream and don't give up and I think I'm not gonna let this body of mine that's failing me ruin my life I'm I'm 36 so I'm still fairly young 
you know ultimately I would love to find love I'd love to find someone who will accept me for me accept me for being overweight accept me for having illnesses and still want to be with me despite the fact that I am so unwell but that's so hard to find it really is and having this well not just this Ellis Danlos syndrome but all the other conditions that I have I can't have children and thank goodness I don't want children I never have but it's hard to find a partner who actually doesn't want children either I've come off of the dating apps I don't go out clubbing obviously because I can't I don't go out so I don't meet anyone so finding love is literally impossible and you know with things like my weight against me my illnesses against me the fact that I can't go out against me you know there's a lot of factors involved so we've spoken now about joints muscles and ligaments we've spoken about spine how the spine's affected and of course comes weight weight gain from my inactivity I've always been fairly big um, as a child I was quite chubby also because I've been on so many medications for so many years and also on steroids I've blown up like my face mostly looks like it's um, inflated but it's impossible to lose weight when you can't move when you can't do exercise and the fact that now I've got Hashimoto's which is a very strong form of underactive thyroid that also puts weight on and I'm terrified because the my GP has just told me that I've got pre-diabetes stage in my blood works so you know the advice is to lose weight people seem to think that when you're fat it's just because you overeat and that really is not the case um, of course I could do better I definitely could do better but I have tried everything out there and I can't I can't lose weight and I've got so many medications that you know one of the side effects actually is gaining weight one of them being gabapentin and obviously steroids I'm not on steroids permanently but I'm on and off them all the time so please don't think that I'm overweight because I sit here eating like an absolute hog because I don't weight really puts pressure on the joints on your back and my legs really feel the strain my back is in absolute agony towards the bottom in the lower region so the coccyx the L5 and S1 are the very bottom sections of your back and they take the most of your weight so also because my back's so flexible and so unstable the back is really struggling and my weight gain is really causing me extra problems and extra pain and it's a daily struggle I hate how I look okay I'm gonna put that out there I hate my body I hate my face and I hate the fact that I can't change it and I've been offered all these miracle shakes and smoothies and diets and pills and do this and do that and don't eat this I am absolutely fed up with it because I have tried so much I've spent so much of my money which I don't have to spare on all of these so-called cures and it just doesn't work it doesn't work these so-called cures aren't just for weight I'm talking about curing my symptoms and my conditions and it's actually quite offensive when people come to you with these things saying oh this will cure you it's cured cancer you know it's cured this and it's cured that do you really think that a pill is going to help all of my eight conditions and you can't come to someone who's suffered and is suffering so much and tell them that this miracle pill is going to fix everything because it isn't some people actually get weight loss with these conditions and it's just as bad for them as it is for people it does affect your confidence so please just think about people before you comment on their weight or before you offer them some kind of a solution for their weight and Elastanos specifically does not come with just this one condition it comes with quite a few conditions and one of them is called POTS which stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and that is an autonomic dysfunction syndrome it's also called dysautonomia and basically it just means that your autonomic 
nervous system is malfunctioning and this comes with a whole load of symptoms it causes blackouts when you go from sitting to standing stand up to quick people know that as a head rush but with pots it's actually more than that. Some people, their blood pressure suddenly drops and it causes a blackout or their heart rate drops. And sometimes when I'm standing in one position for say 10 minutes, if you stand still, sometimes you just feel like you get the symptoms, which is called pre-syncope. So that's pre-blackout. So basically you get symptoms such as like maybe tingling in your neck or sweating, or your heart starts racing, you start to see, you know, a little bit black, you start to go a bit dizzy. So POPs is, it is actually a bit more complex than what I'm speaking about now. I'm just touching on certain things just to speak about what comes along with Ellis and Noss. Autonomic dysfunction that comes with temperature disturbances, you know, a slight temperature increase or decrease really affects the body and I'm intolerant to the heat. A lot of people are actually intolerant to the cold, but mainly I just get really, really severe hot flushes, which create me to black out or palpitations and lots of other symptoms. But the hot flushes are a really, really bad symptom for me. You know, we know mostly hot flushes are linked to people going through the menopause, but it actually affects people with some of these conditions as well. They are extremely distressing. There's nothing you can do to cool down. It's like my body, I get goose pimples all over my skin and most of my skin is really freezing to touch while I'm going through the hot flush. So I'll be sweating and boiling hot, like to the point of wanting to vomit, yet my skin will be freezing to touch. It's, it's a really strange experience and it messes with your brain. Your brain can't comprehend why you're cold yet boiling hot at the same time and your brain goes into kind of a distress mode and it causes a panic so i've had hypnotherapy i've had cbt all of these things to actually try and help control when this happens and to be honest meditation and breathing is the only thing that kind of helps keep me calmer when this happens it doesn't stop it coming on. I've spoken about POTS, I've spoken about dysautonomia very briefly. These are lots of other videos that to come. I've spoken about the joints like dislocating constantly and me having to put them in every day. Some days I actually have to go to A&E if I can't put them in properly. And it happens very, very frequently. It's not something that happens every now and then. It happens to me on a daily basis all night long when I'm moving in bed, my joints are dislocating and popping in and out. So it's very, very uncomfortable. It's very painful. It's a very stressful part of my life because I have to plan everything to the tiniest details. Living with this condition is not easy at all. And I just want you to know that if you know someone with hypermobility syndrome or Ellis Danlos, just understand that even though they may look okay, they're not. They're really, really not. And we try our best to put on a face, to smile when you're, we're with you, just so that we don't make you miserable and depressed to be around me. You know, I don't want my friends to stop coming to see me because I'm moaning all the time. So I, I conceal my pain constantly when I'm around people, even family. You know, people sometimes would never know that I'm in absolute agony and a lot of people do the same you put on a smile you make your personality heightened magnified just to conceal what's going on and christmas time is a really really difficult time of the year because you're supposed to be feeling upbeat and happy the whole time and it's really hard to keep up appearances you know there's pressures to act a certain way around christmas just to make it a happier time and do you know sometimes it's not even just for other people it's for ourselves like we we want to feel happy we want to be enjoying the whole season so it's difficult it's a battle and it's something that we go through every day so zebras are people who suffer with ls dan loss and hypermobility that's our mascot so to all my fellow zebras look after yourself over christmas to all my zebras friends and family please keep an eye out for your zebra okay they'll be trying to make Christmas a good time for you but please try to make Christmas a good time for them as well
I will come back to you over Christmas with a few more videos but this was just a very brief introduction to Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. I hope that you found it informative and if you've got any questions or any experiences about this syndrome or anyone that you know who has it please comment below and just have a great festive period. Bye everyone.